everyone, my name is Andrea, and today we are going to be talking about security roles in Power Apps. Do you want to get your organization organized and make sure that everyone has the appropriate security roles? Let it be an admin role versus a business role versus a dev role. Let's talk about what that looks like in Power Apps and how we can get you started. All right, so once you're in the Maker Portal, you want to go ahead and navigate to the Admin Portal. So go up to the gear icon and click on Admin Center. Once you're in here, you want to navigate over to the environment you want to use and get the security role set up for. Once you've selected your environment, you want to click on See All next to Security Roles. So for this case, we're just going to go ahead and create a new security role, but you can copy an existing security role that you might already have in your organization or one of the out of the box security roles. All right, so we received the banner up at the top that we have successfully created the security roles. What you see here is the updated user interface. There is a legacy interface that I am more used to, but let's go ahead and use this one today. So here you can see that you have different member privilege inheritances here, and you can either see all tables or the assigned or unassigned tables. You can also search by table name. So if I search my person table that I use in my student solution, I should see it down here. And I know that it's the per right table because it has the prefix APS underscore and then the table name. So for this one, we and for this specific security role that I created, I want to give the security role access to create, read, write and delete. So I'll go ahead and select organization for all of these, but you can select a user, parent, or business, use it, business unit. And you can go through and do this exact same thing for any table that you have within your solution for a specific security role. I also noticed that I have the HR person. So these are the two tables within that solution. But once your organization and your development starts growing and you continue to create tables and within those tables, you have related tables and subgrids and things like that. Every time you create a new table and expose that as a subgrid or as a form, you're going to want to do this because otherwise the security role for the person that is using it will prompt them that they are not able to see it or they're not able to take an action because they don't have the permission to do so. The error messages that users get are usually super intuitive and it tells you exactly which table they don't have permission for. So you can actually come in here and search that exact table and realize that they actually don't have the security role for it. And you can adjust that, save it, and it'll be exposed to them within a few minutes. It's that easy. That's the high level overview of how to create security roles. You can obviously copy the out of the box security roles. Usually as the developer or as the admin, you have all the power. So you're able to see all of the tables that are available within your solution. So it's a little bit trickier to test those kind of things as an admin because you do have the ability to see everything. So sometimes it's good to have kind of like a demo user as a different persona so that you can go test as if you were a user and you don't have to wait until the user tells you that they don't have permission to then go and fix that issue. So that is how you create a security role. Thanks for watching.